The video you are about to view is intended to provide an overview of general ramp safety in a corporate aircraft environment. You must consult your equipment manufacturer's operating practices for specific operating procedures, limitations, and training requirements. You must also consult your specific aircraft operating manual as well as your company's operating procedures as this video may not cover every possible risk that you may encounter. Hi, I'm Dave White, and welcome to the third in a series of videos on ramp safety and aircraft damage prevention best practices. The purpose of this video is to discuss the risks associated with general ramp activities, such as fueling, ground power support, and of course, your safety. The combined three videos, tow vehicle tug safety, aircraft safe towing best practices, and this video on general ramp safety concerns cover many of the possible risks that aviation professionals may encounter while their aircraft are on the ground. Of course, it's impossible to illustrate all potential situations. Practice the art of risk management, and remember, when in doubt, stop and reassess the situation. So with that said, let's take a look at some of the situations that may pose risks. A safe conclusion at an unfamiliar airport, or even your home base, starts with planning. Familiarize yourself with the location of the FBO on the airport. Check the NOTAMs and listen carefully on the ATIS for the notification of closed taxiways and other safety concerns. Safely arriving and landing at your destination does not mean that flight crews should let down their guard. The same concepts of risk management used during your flight should be employed while you're on the ground. While taxiing to the ramp, make sure that you look for hazards in the ramp area that can impact your safe movement, such as drainage grates, debris, or equipment on the ramp, and other parked aircraft. Work as a team in the cockpit to point out hazards and note wingtip clearances in tight situations. Both sets of eyes should be looking out of the aircraft, particularly in tight situations. It's a good practice to delay the taxi-in paperwork, especially when the environment warrants situational awareness. For ground personnel, the same concepts of risk management apply. Before you prepare to meet a flight or begin your daily routine, it helps to survey your environment for possible hazards. Every time that you walk out on the ramp, you should survey the area for hazards and also look for debris that can cause FOD. For example, paper cups, bag tags, hardware, or pieces of rock. Even small pieces of material ingested into a jet engine can cause significant and costly damage. Ground support equipment should be sufficiently moved out of the taxi area to limit the threat of collision. As noted in the prior video, daily inspection of all ground service equipment should be completed before the equipment is operated. Also, while surveying the ramp area, familiarize yourself with the ramp markings, such as stop and lead-in lines. In addition, pay particular attention to loose surface items that can pose a FOD threat. Your personal safety on the ramp is paramount. Keeping you safe includes wearing all of your company's required personal safety equipment, such as hearing protection, eye protection, reflective vests, and required footwear. Following all of the safety rules. Do not let time pressures lead you in a trap of cutting corners. If you feel rushed, halt all activity and reassess the situation. Only performing jobs you have been trained for. As noted in the previous video, whenever towing an aircraft, first survey the area, plan your route, and have communication equipment ready to alert fellow employees of any potential risks. When marshalling an aircraft, always try to park the aircraft in a position that will eliminate the need to reposition it for departure. Remember, each time an aircraft is towed, the opportunity for an incident increases. 
An illuminated rotating beacon is an industry best practice, meaning the engines are running and to maintain a 10-foot circle of safety. Only approach an aircraft after the engines are stopped and the rotating beacon is shut off, indicating it is safe to approach the aircraft. For pilots, remember that once you receive the chocks in signal, you should proceed to shut down the engines and beacon. Pay attention to individuals who may enter the 10-foot circle of safety. This is particularly important for propeller-driven aircraft. As noted in the previous video, aircraft should be chocked according to your company's policy. Industry best practice is chocking a minimum of the nose and one main wheel. Static wicks are an important safety device on aircraft while in flight. However, they can be a real hazard on the ground. Be especially careful around high-wing aircraft and tail surfaces as many static wicks are at eye level. Never walk behind an aircraft that has its engines running unless you are at a safe distance. This can vary greatly by aircraft and thrust settings such as when powering up to taxi out. Pilots should always be conscious of the potential effects of jet or propeller blast, especially when in tight ramp conditions. Sometimes it can be prudent to be towed to a safe start position when light aircraft are in the vicinity or when hangar doors are in the path of your jet or propeller blast. Placing cones at the four points of an aircraft is a best practice to mark off areas that you should not enter, and they act as a good reminder to visually check the area around the aircraft before it is moved. When placing the cones into position, it is also a good time to make a quick visual inspection of the aircraft exterior. Now you've taken good care of yourself, your aircraft, and equipment, but you're also responsible for the care and safety of your passengers. Morning, may I help you? Morning, I'm here to pick up Mrs. Smith. Have your name, please. Uh, Chris Algy. Thank you. Anyone driving onto the ramp must follow the directions of the ramp personnel and must not leave their vehicle facing any aircraft on the ramp. For security reasons, they must not proceed past the gate opening until it closes behind them. Never let an unsupervised vehicle enter the 10-foot circle of safety. The driver must be instructed on where and how to safely position the vehicle. Vehicles should never be allowed to face an aircraft, plus it's a best practice to ask that they shut off the vehicle while loading or unloading. It's a best practice to place a ground mat at the base of the aircraft door, especially when it is raining. This can help to prevent slips and falls. Use mats that have sufficient weight so they are not easily blown around. It's a best practice to offer assistance to passengers as they deplane. Offering to hold bags while they're deplaning can help to prevent falls. Passengers should never be allowed to wander on the ramp unescorted. As a best practice, the time to service the aircraft is after the passengers have safely deplaned. As the fuel truck approaches an aircraft, it should perform a safety stop 50 feet away. It then eases up to within 10 feet and again comes to a stop the fuel truck should never face the aircraft during this process. The driver should maintain a safe speed, park in front or behind the aircraft in a position perpendicular to the aircraft, keeping a 10-foot circle of safety. The driver should set the brake and place the transmission in park. The engine remains running to run the fuel pump. The driver also places chocks on at least one rear wheel and sets out safety cones. Be sure the fuel truck is properly bonded to the aircraft before transferring fuel. Consult the aircraft manufacturer's manual for proper connection procedures. Once service carts and ground service equipment are in a safe location for servicing, you must engage wheel locks and chock wheels. All carts and ground service equipment can cause damage to an aircraft if they are left unsecured. Stay aware of your surroundings when connecting equipment. Personal injury can occur from contact with open compartments, panels, and other protrusions of the aircraft. Continue to maintain high safety standards when you prepare for departure. As part of a typical pre-flight routine, pilots and ground crew should conduct a thorough walk-around of the aircraft, ensuring the ramp is clear of hazards and observing the aircraft for damage or animal nests. 
No one should operate a vehicle in reverse within the 10-foot circle of safety without a guide. For passenger safety, security protocol, and regulatory compliance, passengers shall be escorted at all times on the ramp. Assist passengers as necessary when they're boarding. Maintain a safe body posture while loading bags and get help with heavy and awkward items. Remove mats and chocks after the passengers have safely boarded. Best practices calls for two employees and the pilot to be involved in disconnecting the ground power unit. Look for the disconnect signal from the pilot, then relay to the GPU attendant. Maintain a safety zone at all times. When the pilot flashes the taxi light, the aircraft is ready to move. Pilots should not move the aircraft until ground personnel give the appropriate signal. You should become proficient in the use of the most common hand signals including stop, forward motion, turns, chocks, and power. A complete listing of hand signals are available from the FAA or can be downloaded from the AIG Aviation's Safety and Loss Control website. The overuse of power when taxiing away can cause damage to other aircraft and GSE. Watch for ramp and taxiway hazards as you depart. These include drain grates, debris on the ramp, people, other aircraft, and vehicles. The job doesn't stop when the aircraft leaves. Look over the ramp areas for these potential tripping hazards. Cables, fluid and oil spills, ice and water, carts and GSE, baggage tags, mats, and chocks or cones. We've talked about key elements of ramp safety, sharing industry best practices for flight, maintenance, and ramp personnel. Our intention is to improve safety and aircraft availability by reviewing the leading causes of aircraft-related damages. To summarize, these are the five main points to keep in mind when operating on and around airport grounds. 1. Plan all aircraft movements before you begin by familiarizing yourself with the airport and the FBO location on the airport. Recognize potential hazards that exist and take ownership for the corrective action. 2. Minimize your risk by making sure those involved with your aircraft's movement are focused on one aspect, the termination or launch of your aircraft. Never take unnecessary risks when they can be mitigated by a more intelligent approach. 3. Be clear and articulate your standards of performance to those servicing your aircraft. Clearly state your expectations to all those involved in the process and take caution for your own safety and risk exposure. 4. Inspect your aircraft and surrounding conditions after your flight and prior to your launch. 5. Be mindful of operating aircraft in your vicinity. They are dangerous and can cause serious injury. Remember, each of you directly impacts this industry's safety. Take control, be assertive, and demand focus from your team or those that are servicing your aircraft. The ground movement and parking of multi-million dollar aircraft demand the same focus and excellence as the rest of the flight. Thank you to the following companies for their support in the production of this video. AIG Aviation. The Home Depot Marsh